Welcome to another episode of Code of Culture. Have you ever heard about the pizza rule for deciding about the size of the teams? Today we will explore the social brine hypothesis by Robin Dumber, how it applies to the size of the working groups and how it can be useful for you if you manage open source communities. Let's begin. The social brine hypothesis suggests that the size of our brain limits the number of stable social relationships that we can maintain. These limits, known as the Dunbar's number, is approximately 150. Within the context of open source communities, understanding and working within these limits can help us create more effective collaboration and communication. Group size plays a crucial role in open source communities as it influences the quality of the communication and the collaboration. Small groups like the A-Team, Guardians of the Galaxy, or even the Beatles, can maintain close bounds and work together more efficiently. Have you heard about the pizza rule? Well, it states that the team should be small enough to be fed with just two pizzas. This emphasizes the importance of smaller group size. As groups grow larger, communication can become more challenging and collaboration may suffer. There are many examples in popular culture that show the benefits of small, close-knit groups working together, like the ones we mentioned before, as you can see here. In open-source communities, working within these constraints of Dumber's number can help maintain effective communication and collaboration. The anthropologist Robin Dumber identified different spheres of closeness with the most intimate groups being around 5 people, followed by 15, 50, and 150. By splitting larger communities into smaller ones, more manageable groups, open source projects can ensure that each team can work together efficiently and maintain strong social bonds. Let's take for example the Kubernetes project, the widely adopted container orchestration platform. This project organizes its contributor into smaller working groups focused on a specific aspects of the project, such as networking, storage, security. This approach helps to maintain effective communication and high collaboration within the small groups. So, our brain has put some hard limits on the number of people that we really care about and we feel close to. How can we manage these limits? Well, technology can be of some help here. Platforms like GitHub, GitLab, and Slack can facilitate communication and collaboration within larger groups, allowing projects to scale up and accommodate new contributors. These tools can help bridge the gaps that naturally occur when the groups grow, ensuring that everyone stays connected and informed. Also, by recognizing this limit, we can try to create better social bonds. Encouraging and fostering social relationships is essential for effective collaboration in open source communities. Promoting gatherings, meetings, social events, and other opportunities for team members to meet and connect can help build trust, enhance communication, and improve the collaboration. Encouraging social interactions can lead to stronger bonds. Promote their empathy, understanding, and respect among team members can also enhance the social bonds, leading to a more inclusive environment where individuals feel valued and are more likely to engage in open communication and contribute to the group's success. Finally, by fostering a strong relationship within the group, open source communities can create an atmosphere of collaboration and trust that can help overcome the challenges presented by the social brine hypothesis. As a group, grows in size, they make from men to do smaller subgroups, which can create communication problems and competition instead of collaboration. Recognizing this issue and actively addressing it is crucial to maintain a healthy and productive open source community. By acknowledging and working within the constraint of the social brand hypothesis, open source projects can take steps to prevent fragmentation and ensure smooth communication and collaboration among the team members. This is what projects like Kubernetes that we mentioned before did by organizing contributors into smaller working groups. Kubernetes can maintain an effective communication and collaboration within the larger community because these small working groups prevent fragmentation 
and increase the collaboration and the communication. However, the social brain hypothesis sets hard limits in the size of our working groups. So, how do we choose your colleagues when you have a limited number of seats in your team? Diversity and inclusion can enhance collaboration and problem solving within the constraint of the social brain hypothesis. This is something similar to the Dungeons and Dragons series from the 90s. We can see how a diverse group of adventurers with distant backgrounds and abilities work together to overcome challenges. In a similar way, by embracing diversity in open source communities, we can maximize cognitive resources, enhance communication, and build resilience within the limited group size. Can you imagine a group of Avengers formed only by six Iron Men? The value of diversity perspectives in problem solving cannot be overstated. When individuals with different backgrounds and experience come together, they bring unique insights and ideas to the table. This can lead to more innovative solutions and a broader understanding of complex issues. In the context of open source communities, diversity can be a driving force for creativity, manifesting the entire project. So what can we do to promote diversity and inclusion? Well, uh, while aligning with the social brain hypothesis, uh, open source community can adopt the code of conduct, provide mentorship and training opportunities, and actively seek out diverse perspectives during the decision-making process. By doing so, communities can maximize the potential of their limited group size while fostering a collaborative and innovative environment, yes, like the Dungeons and Dragons or Avengers. In short, Balancing the constraints of the social brain hypothesis with the need of diversity, inclusion, and effective communication is essential for open source communities. By understanding and addressing these factors, projects can create an environment where collaboration thrives and individuals can work together to achieve a common goal. Today, we have seen how our brain limits the size of the groups that can work effectively. We have also seen how some projects tackle this limit by working with the small, dedicated groups and how technology can help us scale up our groups. Finally, we have talked about the importance of diversity when you have a limited number of people that can fit in your group. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Code of Culture and happy coding!